Bounded by seas to the east, forests to the west, with cliffs behind and mountains skirting our north, we face the enemy. Advanced teams scout the valley. They don't stray too far from the security of the forests and coasts that bound our battlefield. Once they're established, tactical forces secure supply routes and establish influence in the most desirable territories. Small armies collide, and proud soldiers sacrifice themselves for greater good. Heroic or tragic, these small skirmishes serve only as precursors to later, larger battles. The deliberate advance to gain territory shifts our armies toward the valleys into the central plain where solid walls are formed. Unfortunate prisoners are captured as the battle becomes decidedly territorial. Battalions hunker down in secure holdings and definitive battle lines are drawn. Final strategic flurries mark the battle's apogee. Little more is left to be done now. Securing the last perceived weaknesses in our battle-torn lines marks the final stage of our struggle. And as straggling prisoners are caught, the fighting winds down. Finally, it is over. Dust settles on the great armies that have come to do battle. Prisoners are exchanged, and territory is counted. And like in all the great battles that have come before, and that will come again, the armies withdraw. All that is left is an empty valley, surrounded on four sides by mountains, seas, and forests. Go is humanity's oldest surviving board game with origins in ancient China. No one knows for sure how Go, Go came into being, who invented it, or why, although there are several theories. One attributes its invention to Emperor Yao, who in 2250 BC created it as a mental exercise for his shall we say, dim-witted son. Another conjecture is that a vassal of Emperor Qi invented Go as well as several card games for the Emperor's amusement nearly 4,000 years ago. And finally, a third theory suggests that during the Chao Dynasty, court astrologers and shaman created the Go board and pieces as an aid in mapping celestial movements and predicting human affairs. Any one of these theories could be true, but in any case, the game has remained essentially unchanged for well over 3,000 and possibly up to 4,000 years. The first historical mention of Go being played in Japan actually comes from ancient Chinese chronicles. They mention that Go was a major pastime of Japanese aristocrats in the early 7th century. But like the origins of Go, no one really knows how or when it came to Japan. Go could have been brought to Japan in the 6th century by Koreans fleeing political corruption in their own country. Or it may have been imported by a high-level commission sent by Japan to China early in the 7th century. The ambassador of that commission, 
an aristocrat named Kibi no Makibi, may have brought Go back to Japan after his 18 years of study abroad. In Japan, Go was played in fairly small circles by aristocrats, warlords, and Buddhist monks until the early 1600s. In 1603, the Shogun, or Supreme Warlord, appointed a Buddhist monk named Nikai to head a new government office devoted to the development and regulation of Go. Nikai agreed and took the name Honinbo Sansa as he accepted his new duties. In the next few years, Sansa established four houses, or schools, where students could devote their energies to the study and advancement of Go. These four houses, Oninbo, Ayashi, Yasui, and Inoue, remained in place until the middle of the 19th century. In fact, a hereditary line of preeminent players continued unbroken until 1940, when the 21st Honenbo died. This subsidized, government-regulated study of Go made Japan the world's intellectual leader of the game. But even this governmental promotion did not influence the widespread play of the game. It wasn't until the mid-20th century when Japanese newspapers began sponsoring Go tournaments worth substantial amounts of money that nearly everyone began to play. Recent history has demonstrated that both China and Korea are very strong Go countries, probably enriched by the success of the Japanese. In recent decades, players from China and Korea studied under some of the finest Japanese masters. So at present, the top players in all three countries compete on a pretty even level. In the Western world, Go was recognized but not understood until about 1880, when a German named Otto Korzelt wrote a book whose title translated to The Japanese-Chinese Game Go. Currently, there are hundreds of Go clubs on every continent in the world. Go tournaments test the skill of players who try to increase their rank and status. Go books offer techniques and game diagrams played by distinguished masters. And computer programs offer challenging play for many people. Go is a game for all ages. Its basic rules allow anyone to play, yet it takes a lifetime to master. Go is a very simple game to learn. In fact, there are only four basic rules. The first is that there are two players, black and white, who alternate turns. Second, black always plays first. Third, moves are made on the board's intersections. And fourth, the stones don't move after being played. And the object of the game is to control the most territory. Seems pretty simple, and it is. In the Orient, children start learning the game as early as four or five years of age. But Go is also one of the most intricate board games in the world. Both amateur and professional players may spend their entire lives learning the strategic subtleties of this popular board game. It's probably important to note that Go is played in many countries around the world, each with slight variations of the rules but that this program is based on traditional Japanese rules. Now, let's get started and see what Go is all about.
Go boards are made up of intersecting lines laid out in an even grid pattern like you see here. The standard Go board is a 19 by 19 grid, a design which has remained unchanged for centuries. But beginners can play Go on smaller grids of 13 by 13 or 9 by 9 to speed the game and reduce its complexity. You may notice the nine marked intersections on the board. These are called star points and are used as strategic points of reference or markers for handicap stones. But we'll talk more about them later. Go is played with 361 stones, one for each intersection on the board. Black starts out with 181 stones, white with 180. The board is empty at the beginning of the game, and stones are played on the intersections of the board, including the edges. White stones always go to the stronger player, black stones to the weaker, and black always plays first. Then players alternate moves, which consist of placing one stone on one intersection. Just as flipping a coin often determines who goes first in Western games, the nigiri method uses chance to designate which of two equally matched players plays black. One player grabs a handful of white stones and the other player takes one or two black stones. Then both sets of stones are put on the board and counted. If the group stones are both even or both odd, then the players keep the colored stones they originally played. However, if the stones don't match, if the white stones are even and the black odd, for instance, then the players exchange stones and begin the game. There are both amateur and professional rankings in several countries that play Go. In Japan, a beginner is given a rank of 35Q and can quickly advance to 15 or 10Q within several months of study and play. The advancement to 1Q is much slower. Very serious amateurs may then advance through rankings from 1 Dan to 6 Dan, the highest amateur rank. Professional rankings are based on a different scale, but they range from 1 Dan to 9 Dan. The 9 Dan ranking, the highest in the world, is only held by a few extremely dedicated and talented players. As you play this CDI version of Go, choose higher rankings as you feel more comfortable with your strategy, or select the number of handicap stones that are suitable with your experience. Since there is an inherent advantage in moving first, most Japanese players of equal rank add five and a half points, called komi, to white score at the end of each game. This komi evens out the match by compensating for black having moved first. Komi is only used when two players of an equal ranking play. If two players are separated by one rank, the weaker player always takes the black stones and plays first and Komi is not counted. When players are separated by several rankings, the weaker player gets a handicap stone for each difference in ranking. The object of Go is to control territory. This is accomplished by surrounding vacant points or intersections on the board. The winner is the player with the most territory at the end of the game. But if both players control the same number of points at the end of the game, or after the Komi, the game is drawn.
When a stone or group of stones of one color is surrounded by stones of the opposing color, that is, when all the intersections adjacent to them are occupied by enemy stones, these stones are captured and removed from the board. Stones that are taken prisoner during the game are placed inside their own controlled territory at game's end, so they reduce territorial holdings by one point for each stone taken. In certain situations, usually during end-game maneuvers, when playing stones offers no advantage, players may pass their turn. White would merely fill in his own territory or move into undefendable positions if he were to play a stone, so it is better to pass his turn. When neither player is able to capture additional territory or take more prisoners, the game ends by mutual agreement. This is indicated by both players passing their turns. Liberties are the adjacent intersections or points to a particular stone. In the diagrams, you can see that stones positioned in the center of the board have four liberties. Stones along the side have three liberties. And stones in the corner have only two liberties. Liberties surrounded by a single color group are called internal liberties. You can see examples of them here. These liberties adjacent to the outer wall of the black group are called outside liberties. To become truly comfortable with Go, novice players must overcome a mental hurdle of understanding the game's broad strategies and tactics. After a beginner grasps the basic rules and objects of Go, he can easily play and have fun. But how does he know if he's playing well? In this section, we'll try to help you out by putting the various elements of the game together. We'll talk about opening moves, developing territory, and large-scale tactics, hopefully providing a perspective that will focus what you have learned. Beyond the information provided here, reading books on Go, studying games played by masters, and playing as much as possible will hone your skills and provide you basis for a lifetime of fun. Thousands of years of experience have proven that establishing a strong base in the corners, then expanding into a larger territorial framework along the edges, is solid go strategy. The reason is simple. In the corners, the edges of the board act as two solid walls, and it takes fewer stones to form living groups. You can see in these diagrams how controlling the same territorial areas takes fewer stones in the corners than on either the edges or center of the board.
Once the opening few moves around the corner star points have been made, playing additional stones nearby does a great deal toward establishing territory. These tactical moves are called chimari in Japanese, and several examples are shown here. You can see how just two stones begin to stake out an area, but more importantly, they create a base from which other stones can extend along the sides of the board, forming a loose territorial framework and making it harder for your opponent to gain a foothold. Just as countless years of experience have proven that opening corner moves and shimari are good strategy, they have outlined several extension tactics that provide both stability and security in the quest to establish territory. A general rule is to extend along the third or fourth line in a direction supported by your shimari, as demonstrated here. Counter extensions like this one are defensive and help block your opponent's advances. And if white chose to ignore black's advance, black could extend even further toward white shimari, exerting influence along the entire side of the board and gaining strong territorial dominance. Atari.
Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari.
Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari 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 Atari. Atari.
Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari.
Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari. Atari.
pass.
pass. Atari. 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 Atari.